Adrenomatic Excel Carry Over Lead. Brought to you by the Shrimp Troll. to 1975 game 432 pirates at cubs welcome back baseball fans of 1972 75 carryover league we've got a huge series in the national league tonight from the national league north the highly contested best talented division in the 32 team realignment it's the pittsburgh pirates world champions against the hottest team of 2024 to this point the chicago cubs so i'm gonna waste your time folks i'm just gonna go right and tell you what's happening game one series opens in pittsburgh the visiting cubs and the pirates both have number four starters going rick russell He's a righty who has uh, struggles with left-handed batters. And the Pirates have Alan Foster pitching, someone they took out of the Cardinal Farm system. He's actually very good against left-handed batters, just very average, below average against righties. And the Cubs said, hmm, really? All right. So the Cubs decided to put Del Unser on the bench, Don Kessinger on the bench, they go with eight right-handed batters against Alan Foster. And let's take you into this game. After an out, Bill Madlock, gone. One zip. Billy Williams, gone. Two zip. Andre Thornton, gone. Three zip. It is a light show the Cubs are putting on. However, bottom of the first, these are the world champion Pirates. Hebner single, Oliver double, Clemente single, Stargell double, Parker single. It just goes like this. How King doubles, a guy gets thrown out the plate, and a walk and an out. Pirates have a 4-3 lead, but they kind of ran themselves out of the inning a bit. They got a little over their skis. They are the world champs, a little cocky. Um, and they're not nearly as impressed with the Cubs as they are with the Cincinnati Reds. Big, big mistake. Top of the second inning. Here come your Cubs. A Carmen Fun Zone single. RBRA single. Bill Madlock. 4-4. Third inning. How about Tim Hosley, the rookie catcher? Had like one good year in 75. Solo shot. It's 5-4 Cubs. How about the Pirates? Right back in the fourth. A Stargell. Two-run homer. It's 6-5 Pirates. How about the Cubs again? Andre Thornton. Second homer of the game. Two-run shot. It's seven six Cubs. How about the Pirates? Bottom of the fifth. Single, single, sack fly, single, double Hebner, single uh, Clemente, and it's now nine seven Pirates. And they're saying, Cubs, we got you. You 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 can be as cocky as you want, but we have the answers. Don't believe it. Don't believe it. The Cubs are ready. In the eighth inning of a 9-7 game, Foster and Russell are long gone. The Cubs used Ken Frailing, a lefty reliever, and he got through a couple innings unscathed. That was nice. Randy Moffitt pitched a couple scoreless innings as well. But Pir the Pirates went to Ramon Hernandez. You've been following this channel the last two years. Ramon Hernandez... A pitcher with a 170 ERA has been a pinata out there. And the Cubs knew what was coming. Top of the eighth, down two runs. A parade of singles. Jim Hickman, Ron Sano, the Carmen Fun Zone, Glenn Beckert, and Jose Cardinal. And just like that, a 9-7 lead turns into a Cubs 10-9 lead. Lloyd Allen, the Cub closer a year ago, a setup man this year. Comes on in the 8th, 
does so well. They leave him in the ninth. It's a two-inning save. Four scoreless innings for a very below-average Cub bullpen. That's okay. Cubs take game one, 10-9, to nine, back and forth like a tennis match. And boy, yeah, yeah, you're on the stage, Cubs. We're watching. We're paying attention now. My goodness, you just took it to the Pittsburgh Pirates. Knocked them out in game one. Game number two. It's going to be Fergie Jenkins versus Jim Rooker, the new ace of the Pirates. A lefty. And the Cubs are like, okay. You, Alan Foster, Jim Rooker. You got Candelaria, lefty. Yeah, the Cubs are looking at the pirate rotation going, there's nobody that scares us. We don't care who you got. Bottom of the second inning, the Pirates get a lead. A double by Stargell and an RBI single by Rennie Stennett. One zip. And the Cubs are struggling for offense until the fifth, when after a couple singles, Billy Williams sack fly, it's 1-1. Jim Rooker is trying to pitch his team to a victory, doing very well against the Cubs until the eighth. The first three batters, Billy Williams with a single, Ron Santo and Andre Thornton with a single. That is the point of weakness of Rooker with righty, righty, righty behind him, Hickman, Funzone, and Hundley. So they go to righty reliever, uh, Bruce Keeson, doesn't matter. Single Hundley, single Kessinger. The lead run, it is a 4-1 game. Fergie struggles a little in the eighth. It's a double by Oliver and Clemente, but he gets out of the jam. It's a 4-3 a game. They leave Fergie in there for the ninth. It's three up and three down. And the Cubs take another one-run win in Three River Stadium. 4-3. They aren't backing down from anybody, folks. This Cub team has got it going on. The magic is happening this year in 2024. Game number three in Wrigley Field. Standing room only if there is such a thing. The only formidable pitcher the Cubs might fear is Bob Moose of the Pirates because he's a right-hander who's good against the heavy right-handed lineup of the Cubs versus Bert Hooten. Uh, in the first inning, an RBI single by Clemente, one zip. But in the bottom half of the inning, a single, a couple outs, a single, and a walk. Bases loaded, two outs. And Dell Unser, the starting center fielder normally, who's been on the bench for the first two games as a defensive replacement, he's not rusty. It's a two-run double for Dell Unser. Unser would get two hits in this game. It doesn't seem to matter. What lineup the Cubs do? They always seem to find the hits. In the second inning, Cardinal, Madlock, Williams, Hosley all reach. It's 4-1, and it's getting away from the Pirates again. In the fourth, Bill Madlock gone. It's 5-1. to one. Is there anybody on Pittsburgh that can stop the Cubs? Meanwhile, Burt Hooten is sailing through the Pirate lineup that's looked flabbergasted with... Jaw, they cannot believe this world championship team is being outclassed by the Cubs. They pull Hooten after eight to the chagrin of Cubs fans, but the reality is you have to establish a closer, Ray Burris, and he's just you're gonna need a closer for the playoffs. So they bring in Ray Burris for the ninth inning and he struggles. A single, a walk, a double by Hebner. You gotta give the Pirates a little bit of props because they are the Pirates. The comeback falls short, and the Cubs win another game, 5-3. to three, Two one-run one, uh, one victories and a two-run victory. The Chicago Cubs rip off three straight wins over the Pirates, humbling the world champs and establishing their own stardom. Let's look at the standings first. This is not a mirage anymore, folks. The Chicago Cubs boast the best record in the National League, 18-9, and barring a four-game losing streak beginning now to the Pirates. They will be in first at the All-Star break with a number one seed. 
and the Pirates are stumbling, kicking, kicking the can down the road like they did a year ago. If you recall last year, the Pirates were under 500 as they approached the All-Star break. Then they got hot. Then they went on to win the World Series. This year, they started pretty well. And we were really scared they would go back-to-back. -back. But now they're struggling. Just a game over 500 in the, in the same realm of all these teams. In the same realm of, like, this team. And then, my goodness, even, yeah, the Padres caught them. Folks, the Padres caught the Pirates. And the Astros are game behind. So we have a game for one of the biggest games in Cub lore of the 1970s. A chance to humble the defending world champion Pittsburgh Pirates uh, four straight games. And your lineups today. Hang on a second. I got to get this straightened out for you all. Today's starting pitchers in a game four. It's going to be John Candelaria. These are the first starts of the series for each of these pitchers. Candelaria, the three starter for the Pirates. 75 rookie card, eight and six. 275 ERA, 121 innings. And the Cubs went out and signed a free agent away from the Dodgers, Doug Rao. Nice little pickup for the Cubs. Rao for the Dodgers in 73 was 4-2 with a 394 ERA and 64 innings. The Cubs, of course, could not afford to... Um, or I should say the Dodgers could not afford to keep Rao because they had the lefties uh, Osteen, Tommy John, and uh, Jim Brewer. Pirates at Cubs, Wrigley Field. This is bananas. Sold out immediately. Tickets went on sale immediately after the ninth inning of yesterday's game. And, uh, yeah, this is like the Super Bowl of the, the most important game of the 1970s for the Cubs at this point. Leading off for the Pirates, it'll be Richie Hebner. 38's a base hit. And you got Clemente batting second today. They juggle the lineup. 211 for Clemente is a 5 4 3 double play turned by Ron Santo. And with two outs, it's Al Oliver. 48 off Ralph. Double one of two. Fly ball the rest. Gets the fly ball the rest. Bottom of the first. This is the same lineup they used to beat up on Jim Rooker, figuring that Candelaria is not nearly as good as Rooker. Rooker. Let's see see how it works out. Jose Cardinal leading off. 48 pops to first. Bill Madlock, 2-9. Pops to third. Billy Williams, 56 is a K. Top of two. It's Richie Zisk. 4-4. Four, four. Third X. Santo is... Actually, it's Madlock over at third today. 40-24. Makes the play. Nice play, Bill Madlock. The Cubs have been moving Santo. We'll have to look at his card when he comes up. Around the infield just to get extra guys in the lineup. They have they they are aware of the defense. They bring it in late, but they've been going with the big bats, trying to bash bash the Pittsburgh Lumber Company, and so far it's worked. Willie Stargell. 211. Rounds the second. And Manny Sangui in 111. Rounds the third. Bottom of two. It's Ron Santo. Let's take a look at the Santo car before he swings. Third baseman. Buddy played a little second. He played a little shortstop. He played a little left field. That versatility has been key in this particular season because it gets Bill Madlock on the field. It gets an extra DH on the field. It gets Beckert and Kessinger. Either one can leave the game and just come in late defensively since they're just banjo hitters. And so today, we have had uh, Beckert on the bench. Kessinger's been on the bench today. Kessinger's in the game as a shortstop. Santo is at second base. And here's the pitch to Ron Santo. 2-11, grounds to short. Andre Thornton, 57's a K. And with two outs, Jim Hickman, 1-8. Let's take a look at the Jim Hickman card. This is not the card he had a year ago. 
Maybe it is the card he had a year ago. When he went to the All-Star game, no, I think he had a 70 or 71 card. He went to the All-Star game last year over the uh, over his teammate Billy Williams because he was better. And they kept his card going. Uh, 272, 17 homers, and 368 at-bats. 1-8, homer, 1-14. It is gone, and the Cubs have the lead. Carmen Fun Zone. 111 flies to center field. This is going to be the tough one for the Cubs. Anytime Ral starts, they're going to have to figure out how to finish these games. It's going to be tough. The, the Cubs' net run is not very good. They win a lot of nail biters, which is what you want your team to do. But they also have a tendency to get blown out when they, lo when they lose. So the Pythagorean is about a 500 club. And you saw that one loss record. It's much better than that. Top of the third, George Theodore. 47's a walk. Frank Tavares. 49 is a base hit in the center field. They won't take on the Cardinal arm. Two on for Rennie Stennett. Two eight. Let's take a look at Rennie Stennett's card. After hitting 353 and 71, he couldn't field a lick. But in 75, he becomes a two-second baseman. Eventually, he'll be a one-second baseman for one year at least. He's got a 286 average with a fine card of 1975. And 28 for Randy Stennett, double one of six, is a base hit and an RBI. Runners on the corners for Richie Hebner. 64, third X. This is... Uh, Madlock again, a 424, and that is a single dot dot. Now the Cubs are where, you know, that's that's what they've been dealing with. They know that they're going to struggle defensively trying to get that extra bat in the lineup, and it could hurt them. The idea is to outbash the opponent. A single off the Madlock club, and it's uh, two to one. Hebner uh, at first, then it goes to third on the throw. First and third, nobody out. Roberto Clemente. 1-9, left B question mark. Do we want to run Rennie Stennett? I think so. 13-14-15, you got a zero arm for Billy Williams. And he scores on a four. Sack fly. 3-1 Pirates. Runner at first, one out. Now Oliver. 6-12, pitcher B. Oliver's at first now for Zisk. 35 is single dot dot. Runners on the corners. Big moment here for Stargell. Chance to blow this thing wide open. The pitch to Pop Stargell. 5-10 off of Rao is a clean double to left field off the Rao card. One run score, Zisk. 11-12-13. He's going to run off Billy Williams. He scores on a six, and the Pirates have it going today. It is a five-run inning. Rao's final batter could be Sanguian, and then he might be lifted. 47 is ball four, and that'll do it. No, sir. Two and two-thirds is enough. And this is going to be the struggles the Cubs are going to have to deal with. They have a hole in their rotation, <laughs> obviously. And the bullpen, ugh, it's a little frightening. But let's uh, at least audition these bullpen guys and see if we can get a comeback win for the Cubs. I think we'll go over the righty, and it's going to have to be Lloyd Allen. He's a relief three starter five. Pitched in game one, hasn't pitched in a few days, plus a day off was in there. So he'll come in, give you a three plus. He used to be the closer for the Cubs, uh, was a California Angel. 72, he's three and seven with a 349 ERA and 85 innings. The 71 version of Lloyd Allen led the American League in whip. That's why the Cubs went out and got him in free agency before last year's draft. Lloyd Allen comes in in the third, trying to end this inning. It's been a nightmare. You've got Stargell at second. Sanguin just walked. Five runs in, just two outs. And it's George Theodore, defensive outfielder. 66 off of Lloyd Allen is a K. 5-1 game. Bottom of the third. Randy Hunley. 1-9 grounds to short. 
Kessinger, 35. Crowns the third. Jose Cardinal, 55. Second X. This is Stennett again, a 2E20. And he makes the play. We go to the fourth. Frank Tavares, 57. Single 1 to 11. Gets it. Stennett will do a hit and run. And it's a moves the runner up on an 8. So it's a runner at second with one out for Richie Hebner. 59. Grounds the second. Runner at third. Two outs for Roberto Clemente. 6-10. Homer 1-7 off the Allen card. It is gone. Roberto Clemente with a two-run bomb. And the Pirates are getting a little bit of relief today after the struggles in the first three games. They've got a 7-1 lead. Al Oliver. 57 is a base hit. And Richie Zisk, 2-7 is a K. 7-1 Pirates. Bill Madlock. 3-11 K. What I was saying before, when the Cubs lose, this is what happens. They lose by huge chunks of runs. And then they win by a run or two. We'll try and look at run differential uh, at the end by the end of this video to check and see where it currently is. Billy Williams, 35, single one of 14. He gets it. Ron Santo, 46, flies the center. Andre Thornton, 43, left X. Out in left field is George Theodore, a 3E5. That's going to be a single dot dot. You got runners on the corners for Jim Hickman, who is the offense to this point for the Cubs. 280 comes through again with a base hit in the center field. And it's 7-2. First and second for Carmen Funzone. 54 off Candyman is a pop to second base. All right, Lloyd Allen will continue. It'll be Willie Stargell, 48, is a walk. Sanguian, 1-9, flies the left. Theodore, 53, left X. Billy Williams, a 3-E-4. Oh, he plays it into a two-base error. Well, you get the feeling the Cubs just had a little too much champagne or bubbly or something like that before this game. And the harsh reality is the Pirates are just going to smack you back in the mouth. Frank Tavares, 67 is a K. And with two outs, Rennie Stennett, 35, short. 7-2 Pirates. They don't add to their lead there. We go to the bottom of the fifth, but let's pause a moment for station identification. This is the Shrimp Trawler video channel. Este es el canal de videos de camaroneros. Okay. Do the Cubs have a comeback in them? Down 7-2. Candy's a starter 7. I'll probably max him out. Randy Hunley leads off. 2-7. Pops the second. Kessinger, 65. Triple, 1 to 8. Fly ball. And it's a fly ball. That's that's Candelaria. That's a good pitcher. Jose Cardinal. 112. Fly ball to center. You know, the odd thing about the Pirates is they couldn't hold on to Candelaria and Jerry Royce in our league because they had Jim Rooker and they also had Ramon Hernandez which is a real shame because Ramon Hernandez has been awful, as I mentioned earlier. So Jerry Royce uh, fled and Toronto picked him up. And that's a big get for the Blue Jays. And I think the Pirates could sorely use him, at least by next year. But he's not going to be around. Top of the six, Lloyd Allen will go one more. Richie Hebner. 1-8 Hebner, it is gone. Off his card, solo shot, 8-2. Clemente, 4-11, first X. Thornton's a 2-E-18. Makes the play. Al Oliver, 66, is a walk. Richie Zisk, 55, second C. And with two outs, Stargell, 38. Single, 1-2-8. Oh, the Pirates are getting everything today. It's a base hit. Yeah, that's the point of weakness, but Allen will just continue just to get to this inning over with. Manny Sangui in 2-3. Pops to first. So he goes 2 and a third. Or he goes 1, 2, 3 and a third. 
with six innings in a book of an 8-2 game. Bill Madlock leads off for the Cubs. 57's a K. Billy Williams, 59. Short X. Tavares, a 3-E44. That's an error. Ron Santo, 2-7 is a base hit. Saw his card earlier to left field. First and second for Andre Thornton. Can he make it this a game? Get him within a grand slam. 1-7. Let's take a look at the rookie Andre Thornton. Folks, I don't know how you let this guy get away to the Cleveland Indians where he would hit 33 homers on two separate occasions in the late 70s and the early 80s. And, uh, yeah, you should have held on to this dude. Andre Thornton, 75, 18 homers and a 293 average. Um, plus, he draws a lot of walks. 1-7 is double one of three, single dot dot, and the Cubs are on the board again. It is now 8-3 to three with runners in the corners and one out. And it'll be Jim Hickman playing back. 2-9 for Hickman, and this time he misses his card. He hit it earlier for two times. This time, 2-9 is a 6-4-3 double play. And it's 8-3 Cubs. Could have been more. Had their chance. Didn't work out. We'll go frail. We'll go Don Hood in the seventh. He hasn't pitched yet. And we'll try and nurse the Cub bullpen. An inning apiece, maybe, just to keep them fresh for a, hopefully a game five chance for them. Don Hood. He was with Baltimore. Cubs went out and got him. At least they went looking, you know. They went to the Dodgers and found Doug Rowell. They went to the Orioles, two teams noted for pitching, to get Don Hood. Neither has really done a whole lot this year for them. Hood is 1-1 one -on -one with a 3.47 ERA and 57 inning from Baltimore in 74. And you saw Ray Burris struggle trying to get a save the other, the other day. All right, so it'll be in the top of the seventh, it'll be Jim Hickman, or George Theodore, Leading off. 310 is a fly ball to left. Frank Tavares, 67. Single one of 14 is a base hit. And it's Rennie Stennett. 611 for Stennett is first X. First baseman Thornton's a 218. It's an error, and you have two on with one out. And Richie Hebner is the batter. 66 is a base hit to right field, and it's getting ugly here in Chicago. Runners are, the bases are loaded with one out for Clemente playing back. 1-4, strikeout plus an injury. Clemente only had 400 plate appearances in 72, had a lot of injuries, so they put the injury roll on a 4. Just got it. <laughs> Minus 5 armed right fielder leaves. Dave Parker will go in for him. We know he eventually has a minus 5 arm, but not with his rookie card. And with the bases loaded in two outs, it'll be Al Oliver. 59 flies to left. Bottom of the seventh, Candelaria is still pitching. He's a starter seven. Carmen Fun Zone, 311, short. Randy Hunley, 46, center. And Don Kessinger, 56, is a K. All right, we go to the eighth. Hood. Uh, he needs work, really. We'll leave him in there. Zisk. 39 for Zisk is a fly ball to left. Stargell, 111. He has a fly ball to center. And with two outs, it's Sanguian. 49 pops to second base. Two innings for Hood. He'll probably come out. Not the day the Cubs thought they were going to have. 8-3, bottom of the eighth. It'll be Cardinal. 58 is a K. Bill Madlock, 6-10, short X. 344 makes the play. And Billy Williams, 310, fly ball to right. Well, we missed the stretch time music break, so we'll do that now in the bottom of the eighth for the ninth innings to give credit. We've been listening to Curtis Mayfield's Curtis LP from 1970 featuring uh, Move On Up, uh, The Makings of You, 
We the People, Darker Than Blue, the brilliant Curtis Mayfield LP from 1970. Uh, we'll, as we go to the ninth inning, and we'll go... We're going to go Ray Burris again, just to give him some work with a, in a low-pressure situation. It's not a safe situation. Let's just get through an inning, Ray, without too much calamity. Burris... Really being forced into the closer role. He probably doesn't want it. He's 1-1 one one with a 2.91 ERA in 65 innings. And frankly, he would be one of the weaker closer cards we have in our league anyway. So it's hard to blame the guy. Uh, in the ninth, it'll be Theodore for the uh, Pirates. 68 is a K. Tavares, 2-4, pops to second. Brenny Stennett, 57, is a K. Is there defense that the Pirates could use in the bottom half inning? I think everybody's in there. Bottom of the ninth, 8-3. Candelaria, we're going to hook him. And no, I'm not going to put Ramon Hernandez in. We're going to go Randy Moffitt. Randy Moffitt was a nice little free agent they picked up. He was actually a San Francisco giant. In 73, he was 4-4 four four with a 2.43 ERA in 100 innings. He, Hernandez, and Justy are the late-inning matchups to close out games with Bruce Keeson being the swing starter. Keeson has relief ability that Alan Foster doesn't have. That's why Keeson's the long man. And it'll be Ron Santo leading off in the bottom of the ninth. 3-6. This is a homer chance. 1-2-15. And it is gone. Ron Santo goes deep in the bottom of the ninth. It's 8-4. Andre Thornton having a decent day. 2-3. for 3-7 three. Three, is a walk. There come the Cubs in the bottom half of the ninth inning. Jim Hickman's had a nice day. 2-3 for three with that double play. Really hurt his team there. Here's the pitch to Hickman. 49 off Moffitt is second X. Speaking of double plays, this is Rennie Stennett. He's a 2E20 second baseman. And it is a 4 6 3 double play. That is a big difference from a year ago. The Pirates, uh, the ability in the middle infield to uh, play better defensively. Rennie Stennett was a 4E41 a year ago. They did have Bill Mazeroski backing him up as a 2. Mazeroski's gone, and now Stennett. Can feel this is a 2v20. Two outs now, and it'll be fan favorite Carmen Fun Zone 67. Randy Moffat strikes him out, and that is your ball game today, folks. A little disappointing. The Cubs, well, you're asking them to do a lot. Getting a four game sweep of the Pirates did not happen. The Pirates are too proud, they're the world champs, and they obviously can't afford to fall down to 500. So they Rally today. They got a win. Uh, Candelaria goes eight, gets a win. Doug Rowell gets knocked out early, takes the loss. Cubs are still up three games to one. They would love to finish the Pirates in a game five in their own park. It'll be Fergie Jenkins on short rest in a game five. Advantage Cubs. Fergie in the Ivy versus Jim Rooker. Maybe this Cub lineup will have better luck against that lefty than they did with Candelaria. So Jim Rooker, Fergie Jenkins will be game five. We'll have the results of that. And, and if the series continues back in Pittsburgh for game six and seven, if necessary. So stay tuned. Well, folks, here is the box score of Game 4 that you just saw. The Pirates avoiding being swept three straight. They win 8-4. to four. Candelaria, eight innings, six hits, three runs, two earned. Didn't walk a batter. And he struck out six. Randy Moffitt pitched an inning. Rao got blasted in two and two-thirds. Six hits, five runs. Uh, Lloyd Allen, Don Hood in relief, and Ray Burris. And... Uh, well, got some baseball to talk about, folks. Let's see what happened in Game 5 in Wrigley Field. Okay, got a little hangover there, Cubs. So what do you do in Game number 5? It's Jim Rooker, another lefty, after Candy, against Fergie Jenkins. In this one, in the third, 
Willie Stargell, if you've been following in the past years, Stargell's really struggled in the carryover leagues with batting average, but not this year. Um, he's using the 73 card, which is better than the 71, which isn't as good as a 71 card, but statistically he's playing better with this card. Uh, one zip. It is a one nothing game as suddenly the Cubs, uh-oh, they're starting to press way too much as they had a 3 nothing lead. And, oh, boy, here it's coming, folks. It is coming. The, yeah, the Cub fan, the nightmare is on the way. Uh, one nothing game, but then Fergie could bear no more in the seventh. It's a Clemente double, a triple by Stargell, a Zisk single, a Parker double, a Hal King single, and now the game is five zip, and now we're asking Fergie, can you give us maybe another inning to help out the bullpen that pitched a lot in game four? This thing's eight zip, and the Cubs try and rally the ninth off of Bruce Keeson. They actually put up a decent fight in the ninth, a Billy Williams homer single walk, and then you have doubles by Kessinger and Beckert. Nice to see that happen, but it's too, way too little too late. And the Wrigley fans leave disappointed. They got a nice little tease in the ninth inning, but they lose eight to five. These losses are not by a run or two. They're by, like we say, when the Cubs lose, they lose big, and they have just lost big. Three, three nothing series lead is shot. It's three two. And they have to board a plane back to Pittsburgh where they won the first two times. A little different. The fans are a little amp, more amped up in Pittsburgh for Game 6. It's Rick Russell and Alan Foster. Remember him? Remember how the Cubs blasted Alan Foster last time? Alan Foster, seven innings of scoreless five-hit baseball. Rick Russell pitching his heart out. Seven and a third innings. In the fourth inning, it is Willie Stargell with a solo shot. This is a one nothing game. And then finally, underused closer Dave Justy is asked to come in for a two-inning save, relieving a starter who has uh, throwing a five-hit shutout. Just because Justy's significantly better. Beckert singled in the eighth, then the next six Cubs get out. Oh boy, oh boy, oh boy. Now the Cubs lose a nail biter because their offense just falls asleep. The starting pitching Russell did his job, and now this team is completely out of sync after the first three games. It's the old Cubbies have reared their ugly head. The Pirates, the proud Pirates, remember they were in the first three games and lost them. And then they start to uh, separate in the next three games. So really, over the course of six games, they have a significant run differential. Better pitching and hitting than the Cubs. So that leaves us simply, folks, with Game 7. For first place at the All-Star break in the National League North, it's Bert Hooten versus Bob Moose. Pirates in the first inning, Hebner single. Clemente, two-run homer to set the stage. Cubs got a single in the first, stranded him. Cubs got a walk in the second, stranded him. In the fourth inning, they did get a run, a walk with the Hosley and a triple Billy Williams. It's 2-1. The Cubs tie it in the fifth, 2-2. Two two. But in the bottom half of the inning, the Pirates chip away again, walk, single, single. A bases loaded walk to Stargell. If he doesn't hit his way in at a clutch moment, he walks his way in. Zisk singles. It's a 5-2 game. A homer by Oliver in the seventh. The writing is on the wall. Hooten stays in there just because they're so scared of the bullpen. And Hooten pitched very well last time. Hooten's line is eight innings, nine hits, six runs, five walks, four strikeouts. Bob Moose is too much, just like Candelaria was too much, like Rooker was too much, like Foster was too much. The Cub Bats have just gone horribly cold. 
Moose, eight innings, nine hits, two walks, ten strikeouts. And the Pirates actually go back to Ramon Hernandez in the ninth. <laughs> Tempting the gods. This is a guy who has yet to pitch a scoreless inning since I don't know when. Ron Santo uh, gets a home run in that one. By the way, Santo started the game on the bench. We just kept pl plugging in different lineups and configurations to try and get the Cubs jump started. Nothing worked. Though uh, Fanzone, Hickman, and Santo all did come in and play. All 12 Cub hitters played. And actually, Fanzone singled, Hickman singled, and Santo hit a homer. But it's still a 6-3 loss in Game 7. Oh my goodness. The Cub collapse is a real thing. But you know what? And you look at the big picture. Here it is. The Cubs are right there. They're still tied for first. Uh, Pirates are in the tiebreaker. The two teams will meet again immediately after the All-Star break uh, to play another best of seven series because the Pirates have the tiebreaker, but if the Cubs win four games to three, um, there'll be a game ahead. So the tiebreaker wouldn't apply. Tiebreaker only applies if they're tied or within a half game. So... We don't use a tiebreaker if a team is up by at least a game. So the Cubs, all they need to do is win a best of seven, and then they're back in first place. Wouldn't necessarily clinch. Too much baseball left for that. There are the Reds. I mean, you know, and uh, yeah. It's, uh, it's going to be a fun finish. Uh, there is no Cub walk away and hide scenario that we just had seemingly moments ago. It's been a bad night for the Cubs. It started out great, then it turned into a nightmare. Let's look at the stats, because this tells an even more practical story here. Between the Cubs and Pirates. Let's start with the Pirates, because they are the world champs. Same record as the Cubs. The Pirates are hitting 296. They have a 418 ERA, because they got into some high-scoring affairs with the Reds earlier. Jim Rooker is 8-1, and one, going to the All-Star game. Uh, Justy's got five saves. Probably won't go to the All-Star game because they've got too many players. By the way, i got to talk about Ramon Hernandez. 15 in the third innings, 24 hits, 8 walks, and 18 runs. So that, if you're wondering, folks, how does a pitcher with a 170 ERA... Pitched to an ERA of 10.57. 10.57. That's how horrible he's been. Willie Stargell, ladies and gentlemen, he is on a tear. 13 homers, 42 RBI, 39 for 118 this year. He was hitting 220 a year ago. He's hitting 331 this year. And it's all because we got him into that 1973 card. Maybe we should have used that earlier. Instead of the fascinating 1971 card, which is, on paper, it looks better. But the 73 card is playing better in my Strat League. Clemente's 46 for 131 in his final season. 351 average. Run differential, 177-4, 148 against. Yeah, that's a good baseball club right there, folks. They've actually played in some bad luck. They're the world champs, and they arguably may be the best team in the National League once again. By the way, your Pittsburgh Pirates had the best record of the National League in 1972. Uh, didn't go to the World Series. So now let's talk about the Cubs. They're a good baseball club, though. You know, it just... <laughs> that the mystique is real, folks. They're, they are hitting 270 with a 472 ERA. Again, those numbers aren't as good as Pittsburgh. They've scored 138 runs. They've given up 157. The run differential got even worse in that series. Fergie Jenkins is 5-4. Five, five complete games. Mostly because they don't have a bullpen. Uh, Fergie has a 348 ERA, which isn't bad. Nothing else to talk about with pitching. 
No Cub has more than six home runs. No Cub has 20 RBI. Uh, there are some good statistics in here, though. Cardinal is having a heck of a year. He's in 311. Uh, we got Madlock, 37 for 125. Hitting 296. I mean, there's nice performances in here. Uh, but it's just so... It was so hot, hot, hot for the Cubs. And then it got so cold, cold, cold for the Chicago Cubs. So here it is. Here we are. Break up the world champion 71 to 74 carryover league Pittsburgh Pirates. They're the first team to come back 0-3 uh, in the carryover league and win rip off four straight wins. Um and yeah, I the, no idea what's going to happen next in the in the wild and crazy National League this year. Thanks for checking this out. We'll see you next time.